please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or med scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 physics questionnaire for the undergraduate scholarships. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. Here we will solve the first two problems in the second section of the paper. It reads, as shown in figure 2, two particles, each of charge Q, where Q is greater than 0, that means Q is positive, are fixed at A, which is at negative A, comma 0, and B, which is at A, comma 0 where A is again a positive number in the xy plane. A proportionality constant of the Coulomb's law is denoted as K. Now we need to find the magnitude of the electric field at C. And we also need to find the electric potential at C. And taking note that the potential is zero at infinity. Let us review some ideas that are important in the solution of this problem. First is the idea of electric field. So we know that the electric field at a given point is just the sum, the sum of all the electric fields that are produced by all the charges. So in this case, we have a charge A. It produces an electric field E sub A. And we have another charge B, and it produces an electric field E sub B. Now, this, this is extendable to as many electric charges as we want. But in our problem, we only have two. So we, put, we, we only use A and B in this case. And then if we want to find, for example, this electric field E sub A, the vector form is given here. What we have is the proportionality constant times the charge. So this is the charge at A over the square of the distance from a to the point that we're looking to the point that we're looking at so the point we're looking at is the point x y and our charge is at the point x sub a y sub a and this denominator here this is the square of the distance from x y to x sub a y sub a and here we we find that this is just the cosine of the angle of that vector, cosine of the angle for that vector, and here is just the sine of the angle of that vector. That will be clear when we show when we show it in the diagram later. And then here we have E sub B. Again, it's just the same. We just replace the A's with B's. Again, the charge Q sub B and the distance from from the point x b y b where the charge is located so the charge q sub b is located at the point x b y b and we are looking for the electric field at the point x y then for the electric potential we recall that just like the electric fields the electric potential can all it is also just the sum of all the electric potentials due to each charge and for example this is the electric potential due to charge a and this is the electric potential due to charge B. So it's just K, Q over D. So we notice that, of course, here we have a square. Here we only have um, we only have the first order, the first um, degree in D. So that's got something to do with the integration, but we will not discuss it here. Here we'll now try to find the electric field at point C due to charges A and B. And the way we do that is we first find the electric field due to A, then we find the electric field due to B, and then we just add them together. So first we'll look at them geometrically. This arrow represents the electric field due to point B. So it points this direction. To this direction so it points to point uh to to point c and this yellow arrow that's the electric field and it is made up of two components the, the x component is this direction and the y component is this direction now the electric field due to point a would be like this this time it points that direction and it has this x component 
and this y component. Now, this x here, x, y, is actually the coordinates of c. So x in here is actually 0, same as x here, it's 0, so because we're talking about c. And y is just the y coordinate of c, so that's a. So y here is a, y here is a. Now, x sub a, y sub a is the position of the charge a. So x sub a would be negative a, y sub a would be 0. And the same is true with x sub b, y sub b. This is now the position of charge b. So x sub b would be a, y sub b would be 0. And then we notice that if we do this computation, so this one is just the vertical distance from c to a. So this green vertical distance. And y sub b is just the vertical distance from c to b. So again, this is the yellow vertical distance. And that's just a minus 0, right? So y sub y minus y sub a equals y minus y sub b equals a. So this vertical distance is just a. And then we look at the horizontal distances. So x minus x sub a. So that's from here to here. Looking at this green horizontal distance. So that's just 0 minus negative a. That's just a, right? So x minus x sub a. And for, for this bit, x minus x sub b, x sub b is here, so 0 minus a, so that's negative a. So we just chuck in a, neg a negative sign here, and now we, we still have a there. So this bit is a, this bit is a, therefore this length here would be a square root of 2, because this is a 45-45 uh, triangle, right triangle, an isosceles one. And we know that the hypotenuse is the, the side times the times the square root of 2. So that's what we write here. This side and this side is a times square root of 2. And then we know that the charges are q. So q sub a equals q sub b equals q. And then we notice that the electric fields, this electric field and this electric field, its components are this vertical and the horizontal one. We notice that they are symmetric with respect to the y-axis. What that means is that the x components are equal, but uh, but in this case they are in opposite directions, right? And that means they will cancel. So this vector component cancels with this vector component. So we are left with the vertical components, but we have two of them. The green, which is from this electric field, and the yellow, which is from this electric field. And so the magnitude of our electric field of the net electric field is actually just twice one of them. So we just need to compute one of them. Let's say we compute for E sub A and let's put that to be E sub Y. So E sub A is just K. So what we have here, K, and the two just goes here. Again, that's twice E sub Y because we have yellow and green. And then Q, which is Q sub A, we know that's just equal to Q. And then here we have the distance from the point C to the point A. So this distance, which we already know to be A square root of 2 here. And then this bit here is just the Y component. So this this component here, because now we, we already know that these bits cancel each other. So we just, we're left with this one. So Y minus Y sub A, we already know that to be A. So that's just a vertical distance A. And again, the denominator here is just the distance d sub a, which we again know to be this distance, which is a times square root of 2. And simplifying that, we just cancel the a's, and then when we square this, we, we have a 2 here, so the 2 and the 2 cancel. So the square root of 2 remains, the k and q remains, remain, and then the square of a we, we have a, the square of a here. So kq over a squared times square root of 2. So that will be our answer. Now let's look at the electric potential. Let's see. And this will be a little bit easier because we already know this relationship here, this relationship, that the total potential is just the sum of the potential due to a and the potential due to b. And we know that they're the same, and the, the distance 
this distance d sub a and d sub b, we also know that they're the same from here and that they are just equal to a square root of 2. So we replace them with a square root of 2 here. Now we just add them together, we obtain this. It's just twice kq over a square root of 2. And we have 2 divided by square root of 2 is just the square root of 2 and nothing in the denominator. And so this would be the correct answer. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!